Action Plan, which aims to save as many lives as possible by slowing the spread of the virus. Protecting the NHS and preventing it from being overwhelmed. Our response is built upon the bedrock of the best possible scientific and medical advice so that we can take the right steps at the right time. First, by slowing the spread of the virus across our society. And second, by boosting the capacity of the NHS so that we can always care for those who fall sick. Sadly, coronavirus continues to spread. I can report that through the government's ongoing monitoring and testing program, according to the latest figures, 195,524 people have now been tested for the virus and 47,806 have been tested positive. Across the UK, the number of people admitted to hospital with coronavirus symptoms is now 16,702. And of those who've contracted the virus, Four thousand nine hundred and thirty four have sadly died. We mourn their passing and we offer our profound sympathies to their families and friends. I've lost two people that I was fond of, so I understand what a difficult time this is for the country. This evening, Her Majesty the Queen will give a rare formal address to the nation. And I know that we'll all be watching and listening to see and hear what she has to say on behalf of us all. I understand that people are yearning to know how long this will all last. And the answer is entirely dependent on how much people follow the rules on social distancing. Following these rules is mission critical if we're to protect the NHS, slow the spread, and give the NHS time to expand capacity and so to save lives. The more people follow the rules, then the faster we will all be through it. So I say this to the small minority of people who are breaking the rules or pushing the boundaries. You're risking your own life and the lives of others, and you're making it harder for us all. We've included exercise as one of the things that you can leave your house to do because exercise is good for our physical and our mental health. But please do not bend or break this rule. We can't rule out further steps, but I don't want anyone to think that any changes to the social distancing rules are imminent because the vast majority are following the rules. And to you, to all those at home, to all those who are following the rules, I want to say thank you on behalf of us all, and especially on behalf of the doctors, nurses, and other colleagues who put their lives on the line to care for you in the NHS. As well as working to slow the spread, of course, we are increasing the capacity of the NHS. Last week, we saw the completion of the Nightingale Hospital in East London. It was planned and constructed and fully staffed within nine days. It was humbling to see the NHS, the military, and everyone involved in its construction pulling together in this time of need. And there are many more Nightingales to come across our entire United Kingdom, including Harrogate, Birmingham, Manchester, Glasgow, Belfast, and Cardiff. These new hospitals are on top of the expansion in critical care across the NHS. There are currently over 2,336 spare critical care beds for the NHS in England, and over 9,000 ventilators are now available to NHS coronavirus patients across the country, thanks to the national effort to ramp up capacity. 300 new ventilators arrived this weekend from China, and we've seen UK manufacturers working at pace to develop new ones. Of course, hospitals and ventilators are critical, but our NHS is nothing without the people who work there. And it's been so encouraging to see over 27,000 former healthcare professionals signing up to return to the NHS front line. I want to say a great big thank you 